Okay, doke. So this is my voltage-controlled oscillator. Right now it's off. I got the speaker there as well. So there's the waveform output for the square wave. I'll turn on my power supply here. Output is off, output on, negative 25. We'll put this up to 20 volts. What do we do for? 25 positive, that's 20 volts. And this is the voltage control part. It'll turn on around 2 volts. Let's go to 2 volts. Go over to the side part. And uh, you can see we've already got some waveform output. I'll go ahead and put this up to 6 volts. This one's limited to 6 volts out. There's a square wave out. And as you can see, as I turn down the voltage, waveform changes, which is good. I'll go ahead and connect my speaker to the filtered output, which does a sine wave approximation. And you can hear it now. So there's two, a little over two volts. And you can hear the tone change. And that goes all the way to six volts. If I had more voltage, I could get a higher pitch. But that's sufficient, I think. In terms of the outputs, I have the square wave here. On another probe, I have a triangle wave. There's a triangle wave. And what we're listening to is sine wave filtered output. Oh, if I can keep it connected, you can see it doesn't look all that great. I'm gonna try to get a look at on this leg that I actually put there for it. So that's kind of noisy. Let me set down. Hold on one second. See, I'm trying to probe this thing. I'm gonna take the speaker off it. Maybe that'll help me just a little bit. Okay, there's that. It doesn't look too good. If I put an active filter, it'd probably look better. But, uh, you know, filtering a square wave into a sine wave is probably not the best way to do it. There's probably a better sine wave for a sine wave generator versus a square wave. But it's voltage controlled and it seems to work, which is good enough for me.